God took me through who I was and then made me into a completely new woman. I'm now completely changed. I have humanity in me, but most importantly, I have God in me. And um, he's all I've submitted to. Because through him, I knew, through his teaching, through his, uh, his touch, I was able to know that I need to let go a number of things and become humble, become submissive, not proud, become respectful, and become tolerant, and become patient. I was, I was once a bad person, bad in the sense that I had negative attributes. And, and um, all my negativity, the Almighty God has taken away. Oh, I, I will say 95%, but the remaining part is my, my anger. I'm sure if you use, I'm, 95% indeed. Huh? 95% indeed. <laughs> yes. I'm sure if you use, I'm quick to temper. Yes. But I don't hate anymore. I'm not bitter anymore. We have more numbers of the younger ones, of the youth, that are languishing in agony, in lack, in poverty. Homes, some homes have five graduates, no work, nothing. You understand me? That's what I said. Don't go to the past. Look what I thought about the present. I know what I went through. I had a privileged background. My, my, my two parents were wealthy. I didn't suffer. I'm the only daughter of my mother. My mother was a wealthy woman. I enjoyed her maximally. You understand me? She was the best mother in the world for me. That's a picture there. The problem of today ah, hmm, is enormous, especially for the younger ones, because they have the re huge responsibility. They have to raise their family. Yes, ma'am. They have to pay, pay attention to their wives, to the wives, uh, hmm? and not only the, the men alone, even the women too. They have to pay school fees, hospital bill, house rent, this and that, mm, expenses has to be met by them. And yet the resources are not there. Yes, number one, your family. For you to take care of anybody outside or any huge family or any interest, family should come first. Because it is a nation, that, it is a family that makes up the nation. Any man or any woman wealthy, wherever, should not permit the blessing God has given to him or her to become a cause, a source of problem to his or her immediate nuclear family. Well, it's a very wonderful historic day again today in the Federal Capital Territory of Abuja, the capital of Nigeria and West Africa. It is a unique day, it is a historic day, and it's something that calls for joy and appreciation as we meet a woman of impeccable achievement, 
a woman that is very scarce to meet on a normal day, a woman who has contributed to the body of knowledge, especially when it comes to women, emancipation, and youth development, the wife of a general, a thinker, a doer, a prayer warrior. We are very happy, we are very lucky, and we want to give special thanks to her aides and people that have allowed this to happen after several, several months of hunting her for an interview. I am lucky to be with the wife of one of the greatest men living in Africa and in the world, General Olushe Obasanjo, in the person of Mrs. Taiwo Obasanjo. Uh, she's an apostolic woman, apostolic mother, and today we are meeting her somewhere in a humble abode in Abuja, Nigeria. We want to thank her for giving us this privilege and this honor. And uh, we are lucky today, 23rd of October, year 2021. Uh, let's start by saying we are privileged to be with you, Ma, and uh, we want to thank you, Mommy, for this wonderful honor. And uh, it's not easy to come by you, but let's start by asking that who is Chief Mrs. Tao Obasanjo? Who is this woman? And uh, because a lot of people just see you as a mother that cared for her son, as a wife of the general, as a social commentator, but who is Mrs. Tao Obasanjo that many people might not know? I am, <laughs> to describe myself, I'm a regenerated soul. Regenerated in the sense that I am now conscious of who I am, what I did wrong in the past, what I should not have done, what I should have done. And I would not like to praise myself and say I'm this and this. I would like to sum myself up as a regenerated soul. A regenerated soul. This is the first time I'm hearing that English, a regenerated soul. Maybe I will have come across it in books, but can you give us a deeper meaning of a regenerated soul? A regenerated soul. Someone who was on the verge of perishing. A regenerated soul is like a Lazarus who was once dead. And everybody had given up on him. But the master Jesus came, spoke to his tomb, and he came out of the grave, and he brought him out alive. That sums me up. I'm a regenerated soul in the sense that I was once a woman of the world. I never saw things from the perspective of God and uh, from the perspective of humanity. But now, Years back, God took me, reconnected me back to him, and um, I became a new person. I was once a proud woman, too rigid, too much of a perfectionist, and um, too critical, too judgmental. But now, God took me through who I was, and then made me into a completely new woman. I'm now completely changed. I have humanity in me, but most importantly, I have God in me, and um, he's all I've submitted to. Because through him, I knew, through his teaching, through his, uh, his touch, I was able to know that I need to let go a number of things and become humble, become submissive, not proud, become respectful, and become tolerant, and become patient. Now I see human beings the way God sees them. I'm not saying oh, I'm like God, but God has given me a lot of him now. God loves everyone. He didn't create anyone to hate him or her. He didn't create anyone to destroy him or her. And um, he loves the good and the bad. And I was, I was once a bad person, bad in the sense that I had negative attributes. And, and um, all my negativity, the Almighty God has taken away. Oh, I, I will say 95%. But the remaining part is my, my anger. I'm sure fused. 
95 percent huh? <laughs> indeed yes i'm sure she is i'm quick to sample yes. but i don't hate anymore i'm not bitter anymore you know when people horse me i get horse but it does not linger it does not linger any longer no. no bitterness no hatred in me no anger no never 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 i just see people and i feel compassion and I feel compassion. Because what you know why? Why ma? We are all going back to God one day. Nobody will be here forever. I'm telling you. The beautiful thing is God. I said every generation will know that I'm going to terminate my journey here one day. And that one day, you don't know when that one day will catch up with you. You are understanding. And now I feel calm inside. I feel peaceful inside. I feel contented inside. There's contentment in me. There's joy. There's love in me. Even those that I have sworn never, never to have anything to do. I go, I call them now. I'm not, I'm not, uh, not that I'm extra. Yeah. I go, what I mean? Yeah, yes. I don't overdo. Yeah, overdo the, things. Yeah? No, overdo things. But I feel love for everybody. Even the bad ones, I feel love for them. Because they are not the one in control. Because if God is in control of your life, when you do certain things wrong, and I mean it's when you do certain things wrong, a, regener a regenerator soul, when you go back to your bedroom, because there is no one, whatever you have quarreled with, or you have, have a, you have had an altercation with, there is no way you will not go back into your bedroom to sleep. When you'll be left alone or with your husband or with your wife um, or when you sleep but when you sleep something will come to you god will come that thing you did that thing you said that action you took was wrong and then immediately you want to make amends that's ad those are the attributes of a regenerative soul you are not rigid anymore you don't want to have your way all the time you don't want to prove your rights all the time. In the past, I have been rightfully wrong. Rightfully wrong. Or wrongfully right. Rightfully wrong. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm not saying. Because God gives me something. The ability to see beyond the ordinary. The ability to understand beyond the ordinary. Clairvoyance. Hmm? Being clairvoyant. The ability to know this thing. It's not me. God will just reveal it to me. This, 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 this. Many things will happen. God said, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. And at the end of the day, it will happen. So, there's no way a regenerative soul can say you want to, to be a landlord, to be sadness, to hatred, to revenge, to everlasting, eternal hatred no never never mm -mm, you cannot it can't happen when you see any soul that says lie 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 I would not, mm. <laughs> because god is going to ask you you're going to stand before him one day and god is real god is real god is very very real heaven is real that, that, that's the message for all that heaven is real but a lot of people are in the world today and they just say they, they just said they want to enjoy themselves in the world they want to wear the best ornaments they want to dress expensively gorgeously they want to just capture the world so what, what you are saying now is that for all those things heaven is real and they should think of heaven instead of the world instead of catching Christ in the world i don't pity them i have empathy for them there's a difference between pity and empathy you, catch, you, know, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? A regenerative, all these things are in the book of a regenerative soul. When you see all these souls say this and this and this and this and that, it's because they have not had the contacts. <laughs> when I mean a very, very deep contact, connection, intercourse. I call it intercourse. You know, have had an intercourse with Almighty God, with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's what I mean by empathy. Because I've been through all that. I've been through all that. You think you want to do this, you want to do that. Don't, I don't think, even though I'm in the world, I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. My life is not about the world. Because mm. I'm thinking of where I'm going to be. Mm. 
And I want to be there. I want to be in heaven. You want to work hard to gain heaven. You don't work hard. You don't work hard. The only thing is there is a consciousness. Because you're, you, you're working hard. And it's not, you don't know who God is. What, I'm, what I mean, you don't know who God is. Your hard work might be filthy right before God. He's not working. But I want to do the little bit I can that he has given me. To make sure that I am in preparation to stand before him one day to say, Daddy, I love you. Thank you. I'm here now with you. And I want to be in heaven. <laughs> that place is better. You know, I have suffered pain in, in my physical body. When I hit my body or I have one amen giving me agony. And then I say, oh, there, there, are, there is a place where there is no separation between you and that agony and that pain. The pain is eternal. Eternal. You can never separate yourself. You can never get out. And now you are now, it makes me more humble. There's no way. My, my own life now is 100% inside and outside for God. Whatever may be the opinion of anyone does not move me. Whatever may be the summary of anybody does not move me. Whatever may be the judgment of anyone does not move me. What moves me now is how do God sees me? How do God sees you? Will you be happy with what I'm doing? Yes. May be happy with what you are doing now on earth. Pass, you know one thing about God? He loves sinners. He loves sinners. <laughs> he loves sinners. And um, the, 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 the mechanism for fallibility is the only one that is infallible. You know that. Without error. Infallible means without error. Yes. You understand me? The, the mechanism for, for failures, for, for the mortal in us, he is the one that put it there. The faculty for all these things we do, anger, I'll tell you, anger and this or that, they are all from God. Nothing exists outside of God. When you, I fear God too much. And how deep reverential fear of God. And that is what motivates me now. That is what sustains me. That is what nourishes me. That is what keeps me. That's why I enjoy good health. Because I've discovered that most, the, 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 the meaning of most illnesses is bitterness. Oh, the sources of most illnesses is bitterness. Oh. When you have too much hatred, too much bitterness, the thing will go in there and become a tumor. I know these tumors too, they are good cells though. Mm? They're not bad. The, these tumors, they were good cells. They are now torn to tumors, to bad cells that are now attacking your body. So today now, I have good health. I don't run from one hospital to the other. I don't run from one um, specialist to the other. I have good health. God has been able to take over because, I mean, you are in contact and inclined with him. But I want to ask you that you talk much like a theologist, and I'm so surprised meeting a different Mrs. Tai Sanjo this morning. Uh, did you go to any Bible seminary, or did you go through a process of uh, biblical uh, education? I did. God pushed me to go to a Bible college, and, um, and that was a turning point. Yes, that was a turning point. And I remember when we were in Bible college, my favorite topic was eschatology. Eschatology. Yes. And then God said, I will pay attention to authority and submission. Um, <laughs> that was where the complete breakdown came in. I realized, oh, a lot of things, a woman, a wife, she submit to her husband. She respect her husband. She, she not lord it over her husband. Mm -hmm. And also submit to authorities. Like you now, God can make you a governor. I should not say, ah, who is he? I, I know him now. I should respect him. I should honor him. You understand? And God made me to know what authority and submission is. And from there, I submitted. And now I find it easy to understand people, to submit to, to their ways of decisions, to their decisions. 
Before I say, no, no, you are wrong, you are wrong. This, 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 I want to enforce it. But then, God said, don't enforce anything anymore. At a stage, and then most times when I say something, and that thing that I say, that thing that God showed me will let her come to pass. But God said, don't enforce it. And then try and know how to, how to relate to people. Because I'm too finicky, I'm too much of a perfectionist. I like to be orderly. I like things to be nice, to be beautiful, aesthetic, surrounding. I love it. And God said, I am the creator of all of them, the good and the bad, the dirty and the clean ones. And all these things God took me through. And today, I will say I'm, I'm a better, not the best, I'm a better person. No. Let, let me quickly go to you growing. What was life like when you were growing? I mean, uh, in your own days, uh, it appears that the society was much more uh, cheaper, much more, uh, uh, maybe I could say much more better, much more, um, uh, you know, much more not too hard, you know. So, but what is your experience growing up in Nigeria? I said it's it for you. Uh, growing up was good. And I will tell you one thing I feel for the younger ones these days, the, young, the youth especially, they are having it tough very very soft you see many of them they are committing suicide so you were talking me you're asking the question how was it when we we're growing up and now oh then yeah. i don't want to even go back to that you have to give us no, 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 let me tell you why, why because ma? now the, we have more numbers of the younger ones of the youth that are languishing in agony in lack in poverty Homes, some homes have five graduates, no work, nothing. You understand me? That's what I said. Don't go to the past. Look what I thought about the present. I know what I went to. I had a privileged background. I, my my, my two parents were wealthy. I didn't suffer. I'm the only daughter of my mother. My mother was a wealthy woman. I enjoyed her maximally. You understand me? She was the best mother in the world for me. That's a picture there, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but the youths now, the youth. What they are going through is, um, is in me. I feel for them too much. Many are doing keke or kada rider. Many are barbers. Many are drivers. There's nothing wrong with such profession. You understand me? Because, he, like I said, he's a god of order. He has created ever, and you as a doctor, you as a cook, you as a nurse, you as a lawyer, you as a mechanic, you as this or that, you understand me? But when someone has gone into the pinnacle of having a PhD or a master's or a first degree, you understand me, even on NC or whatever, and yet you have no job. Oh, and um, there are many of them that are energetic. They have good vision, but how to translate it, how to concretize this is a problem. And if they could miss, let me give you an example. There is one man, a Nigerian. He works, I think he works with um, this man, Elon Musk. General okay. Aliu, is he Aliu? He was one of those designing the electric cars. Okay. Is that guy, like I said, many, you know, I'm going back to your question, I'm answering it. Many, many young ones, or many people, they will leave Nigeria as nothing. And when they go to an environment where they can flow, oh, yes. where they enjoy an oxygenated life, you see them. The vision, the, the project they have become the a real. The ideas. Huh? Eh? The ideas they have. Yes, the ideas. He yeah. almost left South Africa to America, migrated to America. America didn't choke him. America didn't feel threatened by him. I'm just giving you using as an example. Yes, you understand me? Today, Elon Musk is a billionaire. And he's into this, he's into that, he's into space. Oh my God. If Elon Musk is to be in Nigeria, he would die there. That's what I'm thinking. Don't let us talk about growing up. What we are going through now, hmm. God. God Almighty. You remember those days when you graduate, when you just come out, you get a job. You get a house, you get advanced uh, loan 
you get advance loan to pay pay your rent or whatever you know but things are just getting worse for everyone and um, like I said the problem of today ah, hmm, is enormous especially for the younger ones because they have the re huge responsibility they have to raise a family yes, they have to pay, pay attention to their wives to the wives uh, hmm? and not only the, the men alone even the women too they have to pay school fees hospital bill house rent this and that hmm? expenses has to be met by them and yet the resources are not there they don't have you can imagine Lord and now how much dollar is to, rep to in Naira the hardship the summary is the hardship the poverty in the land especially among the, the, the group of people that should help the parents the elders is so much and then and here is a nation that is so much blessed powerfully blessed by God and if you just allow these children the youths the upcoming youths I saw some, so a, a, a young man, very young small boy, who had a generator powered by water. I said, wow. Yeah. Powered by generator, yes, on the social media. Water. Yeah, by water, yeah. New technology. Yes. In fact, one of them has been imported to maybe Poland. A, a, a white company discovered him. He was doing something like, uh, I think, a monitoring um, something like that in the use to monitor the environment security apparatus and it was using batteries just concoctment of uh, uh hardware to put it together and they piloted him to poland and a lot of those talents are here but no government intervention no uh social monitoring units to discover them and uplift them yes instead they'll be giving 30 30 000. i say what is this i even i mean i i, I believe there should be a department for where uh, talents can be supported or incubated or yeah. talent could be incubated and developed and prompt up to global limelight i do say to myself because i ponder i think a lot i mean i'm a deep thinker america was developed by migrants from where from different places in Europe, and they made that place a success, a huge success. Okay. Europe was developed by a group of people, and they made that place a success, and they all took flights, they took off, they went to America, across the Atlantic Ocean, and there they made it a success. What is in us that everywhere in Africa, <laughs> we call us developing countries, and yet we have nations we can copy it for you understand me we have um you have on top resources we have good weather and i must be honest with you there are great human beings in this nigeria and in africa intelligent well endowed excellent people in nigeria and in africa only if they have they, they, they have the right people to encourage them, to push them, to concretize their ideas. Mm. Things will change. Mm. But here in Nigeria, and not only in Nigeria, in Africa, they don't encourage ideas. And at the same time, at the same time, the one who has the idea, mm. now, most times, out of frustration, they just give up. Out of frustration, they give. They give. That dies with them. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Let's even go back to. Let, let's talk about when you are young. Who are your parents and what role? Who influenced you between your mom and your dad? And uh, what do you take you to? What do, what will you say you took away from them that have helped you today to be a strong woman? I mean, a woman who can look out for and watch out for her own children. Okay. 
I my my I have my father and I have a mother. Um my father even though he was a wealthy man, he didn't influence me. The one who influenced me is my mother. And um I'm not talking out of bitterness or anything. Um, now, uh, growing up, I used to think that my mother was a bit too harsh, you know, the way she would discipline me, you know, um, that kind of thing. My daddy gave me latitude when I've been his, uh, then I used to be his only daughter before he married other women, Do you understand? He literally changed. But my mother, was telling me that when you grow up, you appreciate the values I'm trying to instill in you. My mother was um, very hardworking, very respectful. She respects her husband and people, very prayerful, and um, very supportive of people. And um, I, I was asking myself, well, sometimes when she tells me I'm broke, I say, ah. Really, how come? But you're multi-million. How come you are broke? I didn't know she was spending most of her money to do this for this, one, do this for that one, do this for that. It was after her death, and I now realized people were now coming to transfer. They tried to transfer the responsibility to me. That you have to help us. I said, Ah, you mean she was in? Many would say that she was paying my school fees and she was paying my rent. And she's the one who this is who many programs she was sponsor, and she was building churches quietly for people. I said, Ah, you know this is what she was doing with her money, and um, she never complained. She never complained, and she's a woman who loved God, and she did not use her body to make wealth. Mm. She did not use her body to make wealth. Mm. She was dedicated. Mm? She was dedicated to her husband. Oh, very. She loved, she loved her husband. She loved the husband's family. Um, she would cook for everybody. The house would be full of people and all, all that. She loved, she loved, and she loved people of God so much. And um, I remember when they were building their church, she would come home tired. I said, how come you go to join them in building a church? How can't you get a labor? You have the money, even if the church does not have yeah. He says, you don't know the value. In future, you understand. But she will go there to join them in carrying cement and all that, when they were building the church and all that. She would take people along and all they did. She's now I realize what humility, what submission, you know, and tolerance. Because she did not carry herself like this. That um, I have the money, this and this. I can send a bricklayer there. I can send a carpenter. She'll be there. With her drive. But I will not follow her. I will not go with her because then I used to think, this woman, she's so religious, she's so powerful, you know. And I, she's now a number of things, and she will be in the house, even though we have to cook. We have domestic servant, but you see them moving up and down every time. And we also see her in the kitchen cooking this and that. She, mm -hmm. I said, but leave this for them. Mm -hmm. So all that I was complaining about when I was young, growing up, is what I now do. Is what I now do. I go broke trying to do this for that, trying to do this for that. And people will know that I'm broke. We will still be asking me for money, this and that. I take care of this one, I take care. I get tired at times. Most times. They want to belabor you. Huh? They are belaboring you. Yes. Mm. So it was my mother who influenced me. Yeah, and um, up to today, I still pray to God. I said, Lord, whatever it is I've done, the one way or the other, to make her annoyed when she was uh, were here, forgive. Because I realized. She took too much of God into her life, mm. into her business, to everything. Him, the number of times she'd be talking to me, and the number of times she'd come to my bedroom to help me to make up my bed and all that. Tell me what is wrong, why, why is your bedroom like this? She called them, I called in the house up, well, let's help her. You know, she tidy up for me, open my wardrobe, tidy up. Mm. Now I find it easy to do things, to calm down, to be helpful, to be supportive. Huh? And it's, 
giving me joy. These are the things I enjoy doing. Being good to people, being kind, is not part of me. And when I see people who are harsh, I see people who are maybe it's on the wicked side, I will not say to a wicked. I like I said, I don't pity I am empathize with them because yeah. they don't. But I think when you do good, it goes into your system. Yeah. It goes into your life. A number of evil things that could have happened, God will make it not to happen. God will change it to good for you and all that. And you you flow, you have a healthy life, you sleep well. So that is it was my mother that influenced me, not my dad. Your mom influenced you more than your dad. He, yes. Then, 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 then looking at your dad, what did you learn from him being a polygamist? What I learned from him? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, you try not to do things that you will later regret in life even if you have the money try not to do things because many of these rich men who are going into polygamy when they are about to exit this world they start regretting they start regretting because I remember um, my dad would talk to me at his old age um, so oh, he regretted he did certain things to my mother. Mm. He regretted a number of things he did to my mother. Mm. And he regretted and that's part of loyalty. Huh? That's part of loyalty. Yes. He treated my mother because he had other wives. Mm. You understand me? Mm. But I want to go into that. You know? mm. um, whenever a man has and that's why I, I, I would like to appeal to our men. If you marry your first wife, try and take care of her, even if you have no need of her again. You understand me? Please, I want to use this medium to appeal to our men. If you have one, two, three, four wives, try and be nice to them. There's no way you don't have a favorite, but try and love them. The person that I, 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 I like most in, in my area, Obata Joshua. Oba, I did that, but I just showed the Oshile of Okeonegba. I love his life. You know, the two of his wives are my friends. No, I love his life. I appreciate that man so much. He doesn't know, but I'm just saying this. I think Obi had the song for him. They said, "Kuwapo ni le Yoruba kalat eh kenyo fe joba kalata kuma yoju eh kuwapo ni le Yoruba kenyo fe joba kalata kuma yoju." What's his name again? Um, tell you a show bad year near on what do pay because the way he carries his three women, nobody is outside there abusing anybody. No one is look at them, there's unity. Look at how he has bonded with made them to bond. I think our men, whether in the north or in the south, in the middle belts, wherever they should take a cue from him. He's a role model. I love, I tell you the truth. You know, but I did that with a Yes, I tell you the truth. He's the role model I love. Another person I, I, I have admiration for is a late Wahab Baba Falawiyo, a Muslim. He died, there was no Wahala, nothing. Before his death, uh, his husband was already there. The his lifetime, taking care of his business, taking care of his, uh, of his uh, family. Taking care of is a huge, um, big investment on the children from other mothers. And even after his death, there was no noise. There was no, no, no negativity to entertain the public. <laughs> yes, neg <laughs> negativity to entertain the public. <laughs> yes, negative entertainment about his life. I love it. Yeah, I'm just telling you the reason why, how, how I love, why I love it. Because he had arranged his life before his death. And after his death, Tunde is still taking. I don't know Tunde on one to one, but I love him too and I respect him. I admire him. Look at how he's taking care of his siblings. Like I see he's the father of all of them. He's their biological father. Did you hear any one of them talking or anything? Mm -mm. They're all happy. They get their shares. You know. They're well taken care of. They enjoy. You understand? This is the This is the follow you. Huh? Including his wife, the famous Cecilia Bafalawi. Yes, taking care of everybody. Nancy Abatu was also taking care of them. Of, 
she was also a good wife to, 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 to him. Mm. Mm. I wish uh, when it comes to marriage, our men could take a cue from Obate Joshua. He's still a living person. And this will help for our lives. Especially men with name, with wealth. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. Men, men with name, with wealth. Because you see, I have discovered that God loves us so much. And when He blesses you, He blesses. That blessing is not for you alone, it's for your family. Yes, number one, your family. For you to take care of anybody outside or any huge family or any interest, family should come first. Because it is a nation that, it is a family that makes up the nation. Any man or any woman, wealthy, wherever, should not permit the blessing God has given to him or her to become a cause a source of problem to his or our immediate nuclear family. Mm. It would be nice if our men, you know, these men, they will have one woman there with one or two children hiding, and they'll be saying, my wife, my wife, with one woman, and there are about four, five, you have impregnated them, you, you hide to go and meet them, then bring that person round. Let them come to the I said, I love Obata Joshu. Look at all of them. The Oloris are in unison. They are, ha they are happily interconnected and connected, and they move with the KBS anywhere it's going, north, south, west. They are going with him in the same attire, in the same convoy of cars, and all their children are growing in love and unity as well. You don't see any woman coming up to abuse, to insult, to say this and this. On those he wants, he has taken them. And these three, he's looking after them. You understand? I will also love a situation where a man who has children outside take care of that woman, take care of that children. You understand? Because you see many men when they die, you see women will come, they will come with children, not known to the family, and um, whereas you think that he's married to one wife, but at the end of the day, they come up with several children. The hypocrisy, the deceits. Is it necessary we Africans to be a poly, to be a polygamist? It's not a crime in our part of the world. Yeah. Uh, mm. that's on, that's let, let me ask you that. Okay. okay. Knowing your dad being a polygamist and seeing some of the ups and downs, lower and highs of polygamy, how did you not fell in love with General Basanjo, who was the former head of state and uh, seeing him from who he, for who he is? How did you fall in love? Was it love at first sight or what really happened between you? Did it toast you or were you the one that toasted him? 